is introduce Tammy. Uh, she's our featured speaker, Tammy McCullough. She's an accomplished mosaic artist, owner of All Cracked Up Mosaics, founder of the Santa Barbara School of Mosaic Art, and Mosaic Arts Online. So I'll turn the microphone over to Tammy and we'll start tonight's webinar. Hi everybody, thank you all for being here. This is very exciting to be invited and I'm excited to share with you some of my experience um, using different adhesives. And as Amy said, I own the Mosaic Arts Online as well as Santa Barbara School of Mosaic Art. But my real start was as a mosaic artist like everybody else here, um, self-taught, mostly have been to a few workshops and um, started doing commissions back in 2000 when I started my business, All Cracked Up Mosaics. I was also a costumer in movies and television for 20 years, so I tried to make both um, sort of businesses work um, until the mosaic business actually became more um, financially um, feasible and I could start to lessen the costuming that I was doing on TV shows until I retired in 2012. So in 2009, I started Santa Barbara School of Mosaic Art. And then in 2016, we launched Mosaic Arts Online. And on Friday, we'll be launching Create Arts Online. So that's just a little background. But what I want to talk to you about today is um, the adhesives. And everybody has different favorites depending on what they're working on. And if you're gonna to come to adhesive, the most important thing you wanna think about is where your mosaic is going to live. If it's gonna be interior, exterior, it's also gonna depend on the kind of tessera that you're using. So I've got a bunch of um, different ones here. Some are more familiar than others. I love this because it's the old bottle of the Weld Bond. But as many people know what Weld Bond is, it's a PVA glue and it is, a stronger glue than like a Elmer's, but it is a PVA glue and many mosaic artists, some very well known, swear by this glue. Um, it's good for interior projects. It's good to use with things flat, sort of um, tessera like stained glass, again, if it's gonna be interior, but it's not the best because if you do have issues with um, moisture, it can loosen the glue, especially if you add water to it, because that's what it does. It returns itself back to its original state, which is you know, liquid, not a hard cured um, adhesive. So that's what Weld Bond is, if you didn't know. So I'm, um, I'm not sure where everybody is in their process um, as far as a mosaic artist. Um, the other glue that's really popular, obviously, is the MAC glue. And this was um, invented by a mosaic artist. The viscosity of this is even looser than the viscosity of Weld Bond. It does tend to dry more clear and more quickly than um, the a Weld Bond glue. A lot of people that do glass on glass like this glue, but I don't swear by it. Um, I think many people have also had issues with this not drying. And if you were doing a commission, um, you really wanna make sure you have a fully cured um, adhesive under your glass that's adhering to the other glass. So I am not a huge fan of that for that uh, sort of the process or you're doing that kind of a project. If you're gonna be doing a um, glass on glass, the number one adhesive that I highly recommend is this. And this is called Nano 470. And it's recommended by Kelly Knickerbocker, by Anne Marie Price, people that are doing um, big commissions that are glass on glass. Other ones that do um, promote a, um, another form for glass on glass is Liquid Nails Clear. Those are the two that I have seen have the best success for no bubbles, clear. They're totally two different processes for curing. But if you are gonna start a glass on glass project, I recommend trying both. If you're gonna do a commission, you obviously don't wanna take responsibility for something you haven't tried before. But if you're gonna use one of them, it should either be the um, UV glue, which takes just fluorescent lighting to dry. You don't even need to go to the sun anymore. You don't need to use um, the special lights that we used to have to use for another brand. And you can get them on Amazon and it's only 30 bucks a bottle. So it's really, if you're gonna do glass on glass, I highly recommend going to that but otherwise you can try the clear liquid nails those two are great so those are those adhesives now if you're working in um, exterior projects and you don't want to use the mortar or the thin set this is another product that I highly recommend and it sort of has its um, 
I don't know what you want to call them, kind of um, comparatively as good, um, are the quick seal, which is um, a caulk, as you can see here. This is a silicone. It's, this is silicone properties in it. This also comes as an adhesive. These are both excellent for outdoor. Again, I can uh, say that Amory Price, who has one of her two of our courses with us here. One of them is Mosaic on Stone, and she uses this adhesive and she uses this brand, GE, and she has had a rock outside here on our property for three years, no problem. And so I highly recommend, if you're gonna do exterior, that these sort of adhesives are great because they really grab on to slick tessera. Again, we're talking stained glass or we're talking Mexican or Italian smalty. These things will hold on if you don't wanna be using a mortar. So those are really great. The other one that um, is really well known sorry, this is all backwards because of the camera, or is Lexel, and it's another sealant. But what's different about Lexel that I highly recommend if you're going to do a mailbox or something that is like metal or is going to expand and contract in sunshine or weather is Lexel. And the reason for that is it has a little bit of a rubbery texture when it cures. And I just so happen to still have the sample board from when I shot my um, adhesives online course with Mosaic Arts Online, which you're all getting the very abbreviated version, is that you can see that you, this is Lexel, this is two years old, and it has a little bit of give on it, just enough that the stuff can expand and contract your um, substrate. So I had a student do a mailbox, and we used this adhesive, and it's two years old, and no problem. So Lexel is another great adhesive, and it dries clear. Um, if you are going to work with DAP, um, this one or the silicone, they both come in white or clear. This comes in even other colors, but I recommend white or clear depending on your tessera. If you're going to have a slightly transparent tessera like stained glass, you might want to have white behind it so it doesn't dry clear and show your substrate should that be um, a MDF board or a Weddy board or something like that. If you have the white, you're going to have more of the reflection of the color coming back at you anyway. So consider that too when you're purchasing these types of adhesives. So the adhesive that everyone usually talks about is mortar or thin set. And mortar is what it is. And thin set and why it's called thin set is when you're in the tile industry, why they call it thin set is you are laying a thin layer of the mortar and then you're going to lay your tiles on top of them and that's why they use the um, floats or the trowels and stuff like that. But the thing about thin set is it can range anywhere from $13 to $30, $60 for a bag, 50 pound bag. But what's really important is the way that the thin set is fortified. So I'm just going to show you a few different brands of what is out there if you're not familiar with it. So this is the custom blend is usually out of Home Depot. And as you can see right up here, this is a standard thin set and it has no fortification in it at all. So if you are a tile setter, there's a really good chance you would probably um, use an admix to it to make it stronger. A lot of times tile setters like to add a strengthener to it and so they don't even need to buy the fortified. They'll just add admix to it and then they don't need water at all. So this is though the fortified version of, um, of what I just showed you. And again, these are both at Home Depot, 13 to 15 bucks for a 50 pound bag. So one of the favorites of someone that's on this actual um, webinar and our good friend Dino Machini is the MAPE um, Adicelix, or I can't forget, I forget how to pronounce it now that I'm on camera, I said it a bunch today. But anyway, the P10, that's what I call it, the P10, the MAPE P10. But what's really important with the MAPE P10 is that you're gonna use the Caraply, which is the admix that goes with it. So Dino is a real stickler about this, and it's a different named brand when it's bought in Italy, but here in the States, uh, working with um, the Thins, the Italian small tea, when he's creating a project, when Annabelle's creating a project, sometimes when I'm creating a project, I will use it as well, but you wanna have the Caraply and um, this mortar, and it's white, and you can see how it says glass tile here. So it has the polymer in it that already makes it strong, but this is gonna make it even stronger. 
And then a lot of times we also tint it. So we will tint it with a um, black carbon um, pigment that is really strong and it is made for going into mortar. And then we can have black behind our, or any color behind our um, tessera because you won't be grouting the Italian smalty. So many of you are probably very familiar with that. So the other um, thin set that people may be really familiar with is the Laticrete or Laticrete, depending on how you like to pronounce it, um, brand of mortar. And the 254 Platinum has always been a favorite of mine until, I'm gonna lead up to my new favorite, it has always been a favorite of mine. It's good with glass. It can be used with an ad mix that they have as well, or it cannot. I've done many, many, many commissions that have been hanging for years in all kinds of weather with this thin set and been really happy with it. But um, then I was introduced to this thin set on my last commission, which is in the floor. It's a four foot diameter um, Mexican smalty commission in the floor of someone's home. And the 257 titanium is so strong. It's stronger than this 254 platinum. And the reason that I love it is that it actually has no sand in it, if you can believe that. It's very smooth. It looks like flour from co cooking flour. And when you mix it, you have to be really careful because it's almost, uh, you think the water's not going in it, but you just have to really slowly, because it's super powdery, um, mix it slowly, mix it carefully. Um, but this stuff is so strong. I had an issue with my last commission of this um, four foot mosaic in the floor that the clients wanted to change uh, three portions of it that was already glued down and when we had to rip out the tessera that had this underneath it it took some of the substrate with it so I had to rebuild the substrate which was three layers of uh, mesh and thin set and then um, redo it with this thin set um, to make it you know, what they wanted. So if you are in the market for looking for a new thin set and it comes in a 30 pound bag, which is awesome. So you don't have to buy a 50 pound bag. And then the last one I'll show you is the 255 um, Multimax that Julie Sperling, Rachel Sager, again, Annabella, all the ones that really love to work in stone love this, um, love this uh, mortar and they use just water for it. And again, they have commissions and pieces and galleries and stuff like that that have lasted um, a lifetime. And the other thing you should always know about Thinset is it has a shelf life. It has a one year shelf life and working people working like Erin Pankratz Smith or just Erin Pankratz, she is, um, constantly having to bag her uh, mortar with tints in it because that's the kind of um, mosaics that she does. And so she has to make sure she has her years on her bag so that they don't um, extend too long because you really can um, lose the integrity of the mortar if it's been uh, too long. And so that just gives you kind of an overview. Also for storing it, I always store it, you know, a plastic bag and then also any or have any thoughts about any of these or have used any of them and experiences crickets nobody um i have i have a question and i'm oh, allowed good. to talk out loud um okay. i know you i know you weren't going to give us information about um specifically where to find any of these but i am yeah. curious um about uh, about some of the laticrete products are those only available in general through tile um tile stores rather than yes. big box stores MAPE is sold at Lowe's, so you can't find it at Home Depot, but most Lowe's sell some of the MAPE products. But the um, Laticrete, you have to find the distributor within your area that is a tile store. So I have to go to a certain tile store here in Santa Barbara for like my wetty board, and I go to a different tile store for my Laticrete products. And that's just the way it works. And then when I need, I mostly grout with Spectralock, which is a Laticrete product. It's epoxy grout, and I have to go to that store for those products as well. Great, Carabond thanks. or Caroplastic, um, yeah. that's MAPE as well. So same thing, you have to usually, the other thing, believe it or not, if you're in a somewhat um, you know, urban area is Amazon will ship you a lot of these things as well if you can't get to um, any of these stores. 
Mappe has a specific mosaic thin set. I've never used the specific mosaic thin set and Floor and Decor is a great place to get anything Mappe. Yes, they Floor and Decor, I don't have one near me, but I have been to one that's a little over an hour from us and I have been able to get um, the Mappe product there. So Floor and Decor is always great and they'll ship as well. What is too long of a shelf life? A little over a year. You really, really shouldn't let thin set. You always have to remember about all, all of the products that we use to create mosaic art is not designed for us. So if we are people that are buying 30 and 50 pound bags of mortar and we are not getting through them because we're making small projects or it's a hobby to us, just know that's not our fault. That's, you know, that's what they're designed for. They're designed to lay tile and do everything in a tile, tile setter and construction world that we are trying to adapt to their world using their products. Any other questions? I don't see anything else right now. Do you have more to tell us or should we think about specific projects and questions for you? Yeah, if you have specific projects that kind of helps lead the way just because that's kind of the overview without getting into um, trying to demonstrate them, um, which would be a little messy right here with just my hand. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. That um, That's really the direction I've used. Um, I don't know what other people's experiences might be as far as what they're doing for their pro you know, projects right now. Um, but uh, those those are the ones, unless somebody has experience with other ones, I'd love to hear about it. I think it's good to have a community and share what other people have used um, over time that works. But it's also important to just always remember the exterior and the interior. Most things are not designed for um, exterior. So you really have to make sure you're using the right products. The other one I didn't mention, I just don't use it anymore. I used it in the very beginning when I was a first as a mosaic artist is Mastic. And Mastic is a pre-mixed tile adhesive. It's white, it kind of looks like putty and you can tint it. I did share it in my, um, and uh, I did share it in my um, course, but um, there are some mosaic artists and teachers out there that still do use it. Um, again, it's definitely not an exterior grade uh, product. The Careply has a two year shelf. Oh, good. Okay. So the Careply, which is the not, it's not a thin set, it's the Admix that Annabelle is talking about. Like, this has a one year shelf life. This is the powder, that's the mortar, but this stuff has a two year shelf life, which is the Admix. So that's good to know. Good, I still have some. <laughs> so, um, so um, yeah. There was a question there also about disposal of unused products. That's a really good question. Okay, so if you're someone that's disposing thin set, this is what I've always done. Um, we take the um put water in it so whatever you're not using anymore scoop out put it in a newspaper and just wrap it up and throw it away but now if your bucket is still dirty what i do is i pour water into it and this is the same with grout too this works really well with cement grout is that if you put it water pretty high in your bucket and you let the thin set or the grout settle to the bottom what you'll have is just kind of a tinted dirty water you can dump that into your plants or whatever and then you'll still have another layer of the settled you know grout or thin set now let that dry and then it'll crack right out a day later, or you can wipe it out with more newspaper and throw it away. So it's really good to be uh, obviously environmentally conscious when you're um, working with uh, these products as well. Local shop gave me a mortar called Superflex. Have you used that? I've never even heard of it. Do you know what brand it is? Annabella, is that Mappe? Have you heard of that one? I've never heard of Superflex. Um, while we wait for a response to that about, um, I also have a, well, I'll ask you about the, the question on there in a second, but I have a strange question about, um, I know this is an unusual situation because you would never use wood outdoor and usually <laughs> thin set is for outdoor, but yeah. um, is it possible to use thin set on a wood substrate indoors or does the wood pull too much moisture from it to have it cure properly? So you're saying the wood would stay indoors? Yes. The, are you working on just like a flat piece of like MDF or plywood? Uh, the equivalent, yeah. Maybe the skull. 
um, the, the, you know, it's just, it's, it, it, to me, it seems completely, um, inappropriate, I guess is the best word, but because especially the moisture from the thin set and the moisture from the grout, um, uh, will um, absorb into the wood and that's just not good for the wood so it's going to expand and contract and then your pieces could fall off so mm -hmm. I don't recommend it um, we're using for external mosaics on a cement board I don't I don't we're using it for external what does that mean I don't I think that was that was back to the question about knowing the brand of the superflex. Oh, so she's saying she no. doesn't know the brand no, I don't. I've never heard of Superflex. I'm going to show you something that happened to me um, that's a mistake that's really good to show people what happens when you use Thinset where it doesn't have the um, proper um, substrate to go into. That's the thing you have to think about with Thinset. If you're not using um, uh, Admix or like we're talking about the Caraply and the um, Mappe or the really strong um, um, laticrete, the titanium, you have to remember that these tessera are slick. They have no porosity to them. So why would Thinset go on it unless Thinset has something super gummy and like a real polymer that's kind of almost a, a glue to hold on to it. So I was commissioned um, a bunch of years ago, maybe 2011, um, to do a skull for a tattoo artist named Kat Von D. She has a gallery in LA and she had a hundred artists um, decorate a hundred different skulls for Dias de la Muertes. So I got my skull and I decided to do it all in stained glass. And so if you can see right here, it broke off so perfectly and nicely, but this is a acrylic mold of a skull and exactly from here, to here because I use thin set and I didn't understand thin set the way I do now and here the it all the glass just fell right off it just came off thin set grout everything and left a perfectly clean substrate so you really really have to think about um, these substrates and what you're putting on them so substrates are just as important as the adhesive that you're using um, um, can I move your attention back to a question a little earlier? There was one from Roberta saying, what about old bags of dry? I think that must mean dry cement or thin set. All thin sets should be dry. We don't use any pre-mixed thin set. So that's what we're talking about is one year old dry thin set. It's been in a bag, it's been stored, it doesn't matter. The integrity of it is then lessened if it's over a year old. Don't use it. Have you ever used? Um, I have never used the P22. If so, where can you find it? it again, I would just ask Map Hey, Annabella, have you ever used the P22? What would you recommend for an interior project with a wood substrate? I would totally recommend this, this or this. Either silicones are, um, are good for um, onto wood and these will hold very strongly. Disposing of dry thin set, trash can, hate to say it. What is, yes, oh, it's a pre-mixed thin set. Oh, okay, so I've never used pre-mixed thin set before, so I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else here I could show you. You can get that one down and I could try it and show it to them. I have one more project my assistant's gonna show. Yeah. Great, yeah. I would love to see it. And if anyone else on the, on the webinar has um, a specific project that you're thinking about or something you've tried in the past, I think it would be interesting to hear about um, failures in adjectives yeah. as well as questions and successes. No, never failure. The mistakes are total learning blocks. I've got more of those than I should be. I could write a book. Anyway, so this piece I created um, on a substrate I made. I make a lot of my own substrates with tint, whoops, tinted thin set and mesh, Mexican smalty, and then I used um, this adhesive. And so if you're not going to use the tinted thin set, which I've done for other projects similar to this, but I wanted my pieces really close and it was gonna be easier to put them very tightly together. 
with this adhesive instead of using a tinted mortar underneath each piece, which I did on another project that's similar to this one. But this can give you just an idea of um, what you can do with um, these adhesives. Clear, you don't see anything behind it. You just gotta be really careful when you're using it to not get any on top of your um, tiles. They, you really wanna work clean and that you want to be able to um, not have a lot of squeeze out or squish or whatever people call it. So when you're working, um, your edges don't have a clear kind of silicone coming out of them. Um, what would you consider any of these adhesives to be toxic? Yeah, everything's toxic. None of it's non-toxic except maybe weld bond. So gloves and masks for every kind of powder that's out there. And then with these, I just wouldn't, you know, rub my hands all over it. I just wash my hands often and it doesn't have an odor. I never ever have used E6000 and I never plan to use E6000. I'm sensitive. I do work outside mostly. I live in Santa Barbara, California, so I'm lucky to have the exterior studio. And um, so these types of um, adhesives and sealants and stuff like that are great to use. You don't want to, you know, get them all over your hands. But I have a PhD chemist husband that is on me for trying to stay, you know, toxic free as possible. Anybody else? Anyone have any projects they're working on that they want to share with their using what the substrate is and what the adhesive is? Anybody? Not seeing any new questions. Um, okay. Anyone have any 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 uh, failures where a piece you've made has not held up well over time? I will tell you mine. <laughs> when I was very <laughs> okay. first starting out, um, this is many 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 year, year, years ago. Someone mentioned Thinset is for outdoors. I use it for all my projects. That's great. You can use it for indoor, outdoor. That's awesome. I was doing a, um, again, a four foot diameter. This was going to be an outdoor dining table. And this is how I learned what Hardy Backer was back in probably 2002. And I decided to do this table on quarter inch plywood. And I did the whole thing using Thinset. And I lifted up the whole table to take it to another area, not the whole table, but the whole substrate to take it to another area. And it was all done in chaos yet. So specific found China and broken crockery was not very simple. And I took it to another area to go grout it and the whole piece folded in half because of the moisture from the thin set going into the wood. So that's why I would never use wood with thin set. That's a good story to learn from. Thank you. Anytime. All right. Well, I'm wondering if the silence is because people have uh, exhausted their questions or they're just still thinking. Yes. Te tech is another um, brand out there. It's good. It's good. It's not as popular, but it is good. So you, I don't know enough about it as far as experience working with it. I've used their grout, I think to grout our bathroom, but um, again, it's sold in the same, they carry it um, at the same tile store that carries um, my Weddy board. So maybe it's more of a, just a distributor sort of thing, but it's not as popular, but I think it's pretty high quality. Great. Um, I also remember we spoke briefly before the, the webinar about um, the possibility of getting a list of these products um, from you. Is that still something you're willing to prepare for us or should we just uh, Yeah, to I, can put together, I can put together everything that we talked about here and it's just going to be copy and pasted so that you can see you have to go find it for yourself because it's just different distributors in different places. But anybody that wants to find Weddy Board, you just go to your distributor and you can find it on their website. So a lot of these like this and this are found in regular big box hardware stores. But when you're getting into Laticrete and Mappe, like we said, you just got to kind of figure out where to, where to find it. 
Would you not use thin set and wood even for small pieces, say less than 12 by 12 interior use? It's not so much that if it was interior use or that it's small, it's more that the moisture from the thin sets getting into the wood and that's not good for the wood. It can expand and contract and start to eat away at the wood. So that's what we don't recommend. It's better to use more of a, something that's gonna cure more like this will. I seal wood with Mod Podge before using thin set. Does that help? It can help it, but then remember you're just adhering to Mod Podge basically. You're not really getting to your substrate. So a lot of people like to bond their wood and use paints and things like that to uh, primers. And I have a lot of teachers here that do do that when they teach at the school. But um, you just have to think about the fact that it possibly, the bonding helps so that it can't get through to the wood, but then are you really adhering it enough to the substrate? So those are all questions that we can talk about. Um, do you have to prime wood before an adhesive? You should, you definitely should. You can use glue and water, you can use um, kills, you can use any kind of primer um that can that helps for the wood so that's definitely what i've always done in the past when i taught uh you know workshops it is the most least expensive and easiest to work with um substrate is wood um but um you just have to make sure you're really treating it uh, right i've been to italy and studied at orsoni and did an entire italian um smalty mosaic on wood using their version of a mastic. So there is no, there's some hard rules, um, but that's just, I'll tell you just based on my experience, what works and what I've used. Do you have to prime wood before you, so what would you use? What would you use on slate? Is slate the substrate? Slate, I don't know. Um, I've never used it. Annabella, what would you use as if slate's the substrate? Probably, oh, because slate isn't thin set. There you go. So you probably want to use one of these higher end thin sets and the care apply because you want to have as much polymer attaching to that uh, to that slate as possible. Okay, there you go. It's it, thin set, it's a stone. So it'll, it's got porosity, so it's fine. Good thing Annabelle is here. All right, everybody, I think. Um, so I wanted to, um, I'll put it in the chat, but I wanted to offer everybody uh, till the end of March, 10% off any of our courses at Mosaic Arts Online. And um, the, um, code is going to be 10 and then n-e-m-s and you just want to go to um i'll put the website in mosaicartsonline.com and so if you're interested in anything else that we have in our library of over 60 courses um, you can check those out. There's all free promo videos to watch and personal interviews with me and most of the artists and you can get 10% off, which is a good savings on some of the courses. And um, like I said, if you give us your email starting on Friday, we will have a new company called Create Arts Online, which is all fine art and mixed media courses that will be under the same sort of um, platform like we do Mosaic Arts Online. So that's it. All right, well, thank you very much, Tammy. Um, very informative. Um, I just wanted to mention that our next webinar is scheduled for April 29th at 8 p.m. And it's titled At Home with Lewis Comfort Tiffany, Tiffany Mosaics at the Air Mansion. And uh, we have the uh, Tiffany curator um, of the Air Mansion uh, is going to be our featured speaker. So I hope everyone will join us then. And uh, thank you again, Tammy. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate your time. This was fun.